Welcome to our lecture online. Another way in which we can try to figure out what a photon looks like, what a photon actually is, is trying to figure out the volume of a photon. Now, that's a little tricky to do because a photon is really part of an electromagnetic wave and it has a certain amplitude of vibration and a certain change in the electric field per unit time as it vibrates back and forth. But let's take a first swag at it and then we'll do some more videos to try and zero in on this particular concept. What does it structurally look like and how big is it? What is the amplitude and so forth? But anyway, let's take this for example. Let's say we have the sun right here, which is shining brightly onto the earth. The intensity of the sunlight when it reaches the earth is 1361 watts per square meter. So every square meter surface on the earth that's facing directly perpendicular to the direction of the sunlight has an energy influx of 1361 joules per second for every square meter of surface. And knowing that the wavelength of every photon is on average about 500 nanometers, we can then figure out the amount of energy per photon and then try to figure out how many photons there are in a particular beam of the sunlight. So let's imagine for a moment that light travels at 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. We don't have to imagine that. We know that, of course. And so we know that in one second of sunlight, there will be a beam that is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters long, 300,000 kilometers long, and if we make the beam one square meter in cross-sectional area, so that means the area right here is equal to one meter squared, then we have a volume of beam that is equal to three times 10 to the eight cubic meters. And then the question would be, how many photons would there be in that one beam? That would be one second worth of sunlight that will strike the earth on an area of one square meter. How many photons are there in that beam? And then how much volume how much space does each photon have within that beam? It's kind of a way to look at it. Now, of course, that doesn't really mean that photons have volume like that, but it's kind of a concept, and hopefully that will help us figure out what exactly a photon looks like. All right, so it's kind of, I'm kind of curious to find out what we're going to see here. Uh, let's see, how much energy does each photon have? Let's start with, ha with that. So we know that the energy of a photon is equal to the Planck's constant times the frequency, and since we know that the speed of light is equal to the frequency times the wavelength, therefore we can write F as C over lambda, so this can be written as H C over lambda. So that's the energy of a single photon, and so for typical sunlight with an average wavelength of about 500 nanometers, that would be 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds, multiply times the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8, meters per second and then divide by the wavelength that would be 500 times 10 to the minus 9 meters because those are nanometers and let's see what we get 626 e to the 34 minus uh, times 3 e to the 8 divided by 500 e to the 9 minus equals and so that gives us an energy of 3.98 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Let's convert that to electron volts just so we know what that is. So we have one electron volt per 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So divide that by 1.6 e to the 19 minus, and that gives us about 2.48, 2.48 electron volts. So that is the energy of each photon on average in a beam of sunlight. So how many photons do we need to make up 1361 joules. Remember that the intensity is equal to 1361 joules per second, that's what a watt is, divided by a square meter. So how many photons do we need, if each photon has this much energy, how many photons do we need to make up this much energy striking the Earth for every square meter every single second? Well, all we have to do is to find the number of photons that's equal to the energy in the beam divided by the energy per photon. So in this case, that would be 1361 joules divided by the energy of a photon, which is 3.98 times 10 to the minus 19 joules per photon. And that will give us the number of photons. So 1300, well, first of all, I'm going to go back to that number that I had. So 6.626 e to the 34 minus uh, times 3 e to the 8 divided by 500 e to the 9 minus. Okay, so I don't have a round of error. So I divide that now by 3. Point, I 
I don't want to divide that. I want to take the inverse of that, take the inverse of that, and then multiply that times 1361. There we go, that's better. And that gives us the total number of photons of 3.42 times 10 to the 21 photons. So a beam of sunlight, one square meter in area, in cross-sectional area, that will strike the Earth in one second, that section of beam will carry that many photons. Hmm, that's a lot of photons, but then how dense are the photons? How much space would be for each photon? So let's go ahead and try to find out the number of photons per cubic meter. So number of photons per cubic meter. We take the total number of photons, which is 3.42 times 10 to the 21 photons, and we divide it by the total number of cubic meters in the beam, and that was going to be equal to, right here, the volume, 3 times 10 to the 8 cubic meters. So we divide that number by 3e to the 8. That gives us the number of photons at every cubic meter. So a cubic meter is about this big. It's a box, 1 meter by 1 meter by 1 meter. And that would contain 1.14 times 10 to the 13 photons. So every cubic meter of sunlight, when it strikes the Earth, contains about 11 trillion photons. Okay. So how much is that per cubic centimeter? Now a cubic centimeter is a small little cube, one centimeter on the side. So that's about one centimeter cubed. How many photons would there be in one of those little cubes like that when the sunlight arrives here on the Earth? Well, to find that, photons, I guess, per cubic meter. So we have to multiply the times the uh, conversion factor. We want cubic centimeters at the bottom and cubic meters at the top. So one cubic meter is one, let's see, it's 100 times 100 times 100. That's 1 million. So let's go 10 to the 6th cubic centimeters per meter. So how many photons in a cubic centimeter? Well, then we have to divide that by a million. So we get 1.14 times 10 to the 13 minus 6 would be 7 photons per cubic centimeter. So in every cubic centimeter of space, sunlight reaching us, there's 11 million photons. Wow, how much is that per cubic millimeter? Well, let's convert. So we have uh, cubic millimeters at the bottom and cubic centimeters at the top. For every one cubic centimeter, there's 1,000 cubic millimeters because it's a 10 to 1 ratio. We have to cube that. So that means there's 1.14 times 10 to the fourth photons per cubic millimeter. 11,400 photons in a cubic millimeter. Now, a cubic millimeter is basically the size of that dot right there. There's a cubic millimeter in sunlight. This much volume would be 11,400 photons. So you can see photons have to be fairly small so you can fit 11,400 in them, uh, 11,400 photons in a tiny little cubic millimeter. Wow. So let's summarize this. This is a cubic millimeter. And inside, there would be 11,400 photons traveling at the speed of light towards us from the sun. When it gets here, every cubic millimeter of space has 11,400 photons in them. So that gives us kind of a feel for how big photons are. They're very tiny. There's a lot of them in a beam of sunlight. And again, that gives us a feel of how, what photons are. They're very small, little, tiny packages. But to get a better feel for them, we now have to kind of find a bridge between electromagnetic radiation and photons. There is some commonality there, something that we have to tie the one to the other so we get a better understanding of what photons really are. Because after all, electromagnetic radiation is created when particles vibrate back and forth. They cause change in the electric field and that change in the electric field emanates through space. But yet, it's then broken up into little chunks of photons very tiny, where 11,400 can fit into a single cubic millimeter. We'll explore to see if that changes for different kinds of uh, electromagnetic radiation, for radio waves, for example, which have much bigger wavelengths, and for tiny little micro uh, X-rays and gamma rays, is it different for those kind of photons? And so do we have a feel of how big they are depending upon what their wavelengths are? So we'll get to that, but slowly but surely, we're unlocking the secret of what a photon is. So still interested? Stay tuned. We got some more stuff coming up for you.